The clavicle and the scapula are the bones of the shoulder girdle. The clavicle can be felt subcutaneously. Prominent landmarks on the scapula include the coracoid and acromial processes. The spine. Acromial angle. Medial border and inferior angle of the scapula. The two bones meet at the acromioclavicular joint. The humerus is the long bone of the arm. Prominent landmarks include the head of the humerus, greater tubercle, and medial and lateral epicondyles. The clavicle is a horizontally placed bone forming the upper limit of the pectoral region. It is entirely subcutaneous and demarcates the neck from the thorax. It is a curved S-shaped bone with a medial two-third that is convex anteriorly and a lateral one-third that is concave anteriorly. The medial point is cylindrical, while the lateral part is flattened. The clavicle has two ends, sternal and acromial. It articulates medially with the manubrium sterni and the first costal cartilage at the sternoclavicular joint, and laterally with the acromion process of the sternum at the acromioclavicular joint. The shoulder joint is a synovial ball and socket type of joint formed by the glenoid cavity of the scapula and the head of the humerus. It is surrounded by a fibrous capsule and is stabilized by ligaments, the rotator cuff and other muscles, and the coracoacromial arch. It is a very mobile joint. Movements possible at this joint include flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, The elbow joint is a synovial hinge joint between the lower end of the humerus and the upper ends of the radius and ulna. It communicates with the superior radio-ulnar joint, is surrounded by a fibrous capsule, and stabilized by ulnar and radial collateral ligaments. The radius is the lateral bone of the forearm that articulates with the capitulum of the humerus above, and the scaphoid and lunate bones below. The articulated hand consists of carpal bones, metacarpal bones, and the phalanges. It is connected to the upper limb at the wrist joint. The carpal bones consist of eight small bones arranged in two rows. The proximal row consists of scaphoid, lunate, triquetrum, and pisiform, while the distal row consists of trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, and hamate. The scaphoid, lunate, and triquetrum articulate with the forearm at the wrist joint. The pisiform is a sesamoid bone. The pectoral region is located in front of the anterior thoracic wall, an area that connects the upper limb to the upper trunk. It includes the skin, superficial fascia, breast, deep pectoral fascia, and muscles. The pectoralis major is a large fan-shaped muscle of the anterior chest wall. It brings about adduction, medial rotation, and flexion of the humerus at the shoulder joint. The axilla is a pyramidal space between the upper lateral chest wall and the upper arm. It has anterior, medial, posterior, and lateral walls, floor, and an apex. The anterior wall is formed by the pectoralis major, pectoralis minor, and the clavipectorial fascia. The posterior wall is formed by the subscapularis, teres major, and the latissimus dorsi muscles. The anterior compartment of the arm is the part of the arm that lies in front of the humerus. The medial and lateral intermuscular septa extend on either sides of the humerus and separating this compartment from the posterior compartment. The investing layer of deep fascia wraps it all around. The main muscles of this compartment are the coracobrachialis, the brachialis, and the biceps brachii. 
The posterior compartment of the arm is an osteofacial compartment located behind the humerus. It is wrapped by the deep fascia and is separated from the anterior compartment by the medial and lateral intramuscular septa. The triceps muscle is the principal content of this compartment. It arises from three heads and inserts into the olecranon process of the ulna. It is an extensor of the elbow joint. The palm is a compactly packed osteofacial compartment of the hand, located in front of the carpals and the metacarpals. It extends into the individual fingers. Below the thick skin and the palmar fascia are several tendons, small muscles, vessels, and nerves. The long flexor muscles originate in the front of the forearm. Their tendons pass beneath the flexor retinaculum to enter the palm. Back of forearm refers to the part of the forearm behind the radius, ulna, and the intervening interosseous membrane. It can be divided into superficial and deep extensor compartments. Muscles in the superficial extensor compartment include the brachiordialis, extensor carpi radialis longus, extensor carpi radialis brevis, extensor digitorum, extensor digiti minimi, extensor carpi ulnaris, and anconius. The dorsum of the hand is the back part of the hand in anatomical position. This area is occupied exclusively by the extensor tendons. The proximal part of the dorsum has a facial band called the extensor retinaculum. The long extensor tendons to the fingers pass below this fascia into the dorsum. The main cutaneous nerves of this region include the dorsal branches of ulnar, median, and radial nerves. Venous drainage is by the dorsal digital veins and the dorsal venous arch. The basilic and cephalic vein carry the blood into the forearm. The subclavian artery provides all the blood to the upper limb. As it passes to the upper limb, it is named the axillary artery. Its continuation actually reaches the upper limb and is then called the brachial artery. The brachial artery runs through the arm and finally divides into the radial and ulnar branches as it reaches the forearm. Several named and unnamed branches arise from these principal arteries. Branches of the radial and ulnar arteries finally anastomose in the hand and form arterial arches. The front of the forearm covers the region. In front of the radius, ulna and intervening interosseous membrane, it is a closed osteofacial compartment and enveloped by the investing layer of deep fascia. It contains muscles vessels and nerves. The muscles are arranged in two layers dash, superficial, and deep.